Hey everybody, um, I wanted to continue on my bootstrapping path here and uh, finish up with my sample mean. So in the last video, um, I ran a, a bootstrap um, with a seed of 43. Uh, I did it on the sample mean. Uh, I had to emit my uh, NAs and then I was able to run the bootstrap using the data and the statistic and I told it to run 100 replicants and then here are the pictures that I generated right the plot of the results so results is where the bootstrap is stored um, I also called for a confidence interval the confidence intervals are really really nice guys um, confidence intervals are generally how you're going to um, fail to reject or reject your null hypothesis um, so this this test that i'm pulling here i think i had originally done it uh, the mu was equal to four so here i am redoing that test just using t.test which we had done in the last thing and you notice here that my 95 percent confidence intervals are very very similar um, they're never going to be exactly perfect um, but i will say that the mean here um, is exactly the center of this um, percentile of the bootstrap um, so this is where I'm starting with the new thing. Uh, one of the things that I ask you to do in the assignment here is I ask you to compute the p-value. Um, so I want to just go through how I would do that. Um, so one of the important things here that we're gonna we're gonna see with bootstrapping is that our t statistic is going to be generally done um, very similar to this. Um, I'm, I'm going to use T. You could probably get away with using a Z here, um, but I generally just use a T to be a little more accurate, um, especially because I know I'm doing um, an average here. Um, so I have my um, mu, my, uh, my null hypothesis, right? My null hypothesis was that the mu was equal to four, and I have my mean, my sample mean that I computed, 3.2667. Um, then normally what we do here is we divide by this thing that we call the standard error. Um, the standard error we can compute uh, when you're doing a mean, it's um, the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Um, unfortunately, I can't seem to quite figure out how to get the bootstrap to give me that. So I'm going to work around that. I'm going to show you guys how to work around that. Um, so first off, I want to show you that this um, x bar can actually be getting right from the results. Um, results dollar sign t zero will actually give you that. Um, that's the same as this the mean of x, the um, x bar there. Um, but the one I think that's really cool is this results dollar sign t. Um, that actually gives you the um, average of every one of those bootstraps. Um, so every one of the 100 replicants that I did, there's the average of it, which is kind of cool. Um, and it gives me a way to get at the um, standard error. The standard error um, is going to be the standard deviation of the bootstrap statistic. Um, so if I run that little piece of code, and maybe I should print it, this will give me this will give me the standard error. Um, so one of the things that I that I like that I do in introductory to stats is that I'll do um, the standard error. I'll assume that the standard error and the bootstrap are normal. That's a pretty good assumption here. If you look at the different um, different things here, the histogram looks pretty normal and the QQ plot looks pretty normal. Um, so one of the things that we can do is we can actually get the confidence interval um, rather than using percentiles, we can get the confidence interval uh, by using um, twice the, sorry, minus twice the standard error and plus twice the standard error. So um, let's show you that. And again, these confidence intervals should look similar, but not exactly the same. Um, this one is a little smaller, it seems, than the t-test, um, and even a little smaller than the percentile test. Um, again, the, the results here are a little random, so it's kind of hard to know. 
Um, but, but that's another way to get the confidence interval. This is the way I would have done it in um, introductory stats by using the bootstrapping still. Um, so we'll do that in Excel in that class. Okay, so then last thing I want to do is I want to get after that um, my T, my test statistic. So to get my T, um, I am going to do exactly what I said there. So I'm going to do mu minus the X bar. So it's uh, the quantity 4 minus the results of T naught and then divide it by the SE. Notice, guys, I named SE up here. Um, so that should give me my T. There we go, there's my T. Um, that's actually pretty high. Um, and so then I'm going to do my test, which will be T dot Q, I believe. Um, and I'll have to give it the T, and I'll have to give it the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom I'm gonna use here is one less than the number of replicants, uh, so 99. Uh, not T dot Q. Um, is it T, it's TQ, I think, maybe. No, not the right function. Um, and I'm going to pause. Okay, so I was close. It's PT and QT. P, P because I want the probability, and then T because I'm applying the T test. Uh, and then I'm going to give it this T that I already defined, and I'm going to give it the degrees of freedom to be 99. Uh, and if I execute that, you guys will see I get one. I don't want one, I want to subtract from one um, to get the uh, to get the probability, or actually I want to do one minus that, right? One minus that. There we go. That's what I actually want. And I get this little bit of error here. Um, this little bit of error, 9.9 uh, .9 times 10 to the 11th. We should probably compare to this value up here. We had 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th. Uh, and here we have times 10 to the negative 11th. Those are a little different, right? But remember, my SE is tighter down here. Um, and so it's even tighter than if I use the percentiles. Um, again, this isn't the greatest way to do it, but it is a way to do it. So I want to go ahead and do this one more way uh, to get a p-value that I think you guys might find interesting. Um, one of the ways uh, that I like to get it um, is to just count how many fallouts, uh, how, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> it's to just count how many times you are, the bootstrap mean was greater than or equal to the mean that you had. Okay, what, what the heck am I trying to say? We're trying to compare four, right? So what I wanna ask is how often is the results of the bootstrap um, bigger than four? Remember the results were gotten with just a T here, right? So we want to ask how often are the results bigger than four? And then I'm going to take the average of that because this will give me a true false statement. Um, this four greater than the results. Um, and then if I take the mean of it, that'll tell me the percentage that are there. Uh, and you see here, this returns the results of zero. Um, why does that give me zero? Well, it gives me zero because it didn't happen essentially is what's going on here. Let's show that. If I just type in results uh, dollar sign t, not shift enter in this environment, <laughs> you see that I'm never bigger than four. Um, if I wanted to back this off a little and go 3.5, we did see that happen. No, apparently not. Um, <laughs> Let's go bigger than or equal to five, because I do see that happen a couple of times. So that happened uh, three out of the hundred times uh, that were bigger than or equal to 3.5. Um, so there, there's a couple of ways to do this, but this is this is called kind of the percentile, the percentile method for computing the p-value. Um, and we could do we could do something similar. We could also make this one. Say we wanted to make this one 3.5. Uh, this might give us a more interesting result. Um, we do see a 
um, p-value here. Again, these are going to be different. This is random. This had to happen. Uh, really, I shouldn't have the equals here either. Um, okay, guys, so I know this is a little confusing. There's a couple of ways to do it here. Um, I do like having different ways to do things. Um, and so one thing about statistics is there's lots of ways to do things. Um, and you should be careful because any way you do it has pluses and minuses. Um, the t-test result is one way to do it. The bootstrap is another way to do it. While the results are similar, they are not always the same. Similarly, we can use parametric methods. That's what I'm really doing here to compute a p-value, even though we have a, uh, a bootstrap. Um, I can also use bootstrap type methods to compute a p-value. Um, they're not going to match up. Uh, so it's, it makes it a little tricky. Um, make sure whatever you're doing here you're you're writing and telling me why you're doing it why you pick values um, don't use a four and then a 3.5 that was a bad example i was just trying to get something that wasn't zero here um so you should stick to a value even if you're getting zero uh, i know zero is unsatisfying but um the i was pretty far off with my guess of four um had i guessed 3.5 i think it would have been a little more satisfying to see okay guys keep working hard